So anyhow, it's great to be, be here today, great to see you here, and let's believe for the Spirit of God to touch our lives. I, I believe we're living in very, very exciting days. We're living in a, uh, in a day of understanding. Can I just start with this, that what, we've got to un- what, we, what I need to realize anyhow is that we're coming out of something and we're coming into something. We're coming out of something and we're coming into something. And we know that God has never changed. God is the same yesterday. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But you see, what happened was when God started the church, the New Testament church, the, the apostles, the disciples, there was, a, there was a, an open heaven over them. There was a freedom and a liberty. But there also there's a lot of persecution. But the church grew because it was uh, the Spirit of God was so real to them. And they needed to rely on the Spirit of God. And over a period of time, the enemy sort of realized, I think, and, and he raised up a man by the name of Considine who brought the religion of the day into Christianity. And all of a sudden, the opposition closed down and the Christian church began to die. Christian church lost its purpose. The world system began to get into it. The world thinking got into it. The spirit of God was taken out of it to a degree. You can't take it out, but it was put aside or it, was, it wasn't thought of. It is not our years. We're in, a, we're in a period of time when slowly but surely, as Luther began to share the just shall live by faith, as the Reformation began to st- take place, as the truth began to be revealed, as God began to uh, speak again in a loud voice and the children of God started to come together, that we're coming now into another place. So what's happened is God's never changed. It's not that now all of a sudden God's bigger or God's something different. No, God's never changed. But what it is is that you and I are beginning to understand and getting fresh revelation of really who God is. The darkness, the dark ages, the, the lies that are and, and so, so many people today that, that there are God is and the and, and so forth, the church and all that. It, it's it's so wrong. And and yet the, the church is so full of natural things. And so I believe that there's a generation of people now that are beginning to rise up, that are beginning to come out of and come into what God really has for us. We're people of the anointing. We're people of the presence of God. We want, just want the presence of God. We want the anointing. We want the power of God. So all over the world right now, there are prophetic voices. There are, there are different understanding and revelations that's been revealed. Seers are all speaking about a great move of God's Spirit, a great revival fire that's beginning to burn. That song that, God, that uh, Greg wrote, uh, there it says, I see a nation on its knees. But then it goes, it's, it's what you see. I see a fire. I see fire coming down from heaven. I see an outpouring of God's Spirit. And they're the things that the seers are beginning to see. They're beginning to write about this. this and it's not new to God, but it's something that we, the church, is coming into. You understand where I'm coming from? I believe there's going to be a revival. There's going to be a great end time harvest. God is getting His church ready. And so I want to just pick up a little bit from last week as I was sharing about the things of the Spirit because I believe that there is going to be a great move of the Holy Ghost. It's not man made, it's God made, it's God created. We can't keep living our Christian life out of the flesh. It must be Spirit-led. I can't be led by my emotions. I can't be led by what I feel. I can't be led by what I hear people say. I must be here what the Spirit, I must be led by what the Spirit of God says. God wants to take us into a deeper place in Him. He wants to take us into a deeper experience with Him. It's been there all the time, but the church walked away from it. The church left it behind, and now God's bringing it back. He said in the last days, I will restore. I will bring back that which the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and whatever else has eaten. I will restore back to my house. And so he wants to take us into a deeper place with him. He wants to take us into a deeper experience. 
a, a deeper revelation. Jesus wants to give us the keys of the kingdom that will open us and open up to us the doors into the supernatural realm. So, Father, today I ask you by your spirit that, come, that you would come. Father, that you would cause our wrong thinking to be uh, dealt with. And, Lord, that resurrection life thinking will come into us. A whole new way of living will, will be our portion, my God. I take authority over all the lies and all the deceit. Father, I pray that where lethargy has got into us or where, where wrong thinking has got into us, Father, I pray that you would just move by your Spirit and touch us again. Lord, cause us to rise above it. Lord, cause us to shake ourselves, shake out the lethargy, shake out those things, lift up those hands that hang down, lift up our voices, and, and, and Lord, we're all around the throne, they're singing with loud voices. Lord, you're not, you're not embarrassed by loud so, Father, I just pray that you would quicken us and help us to break out of and break into what you have for us. And everybody said, Amen. I want to link a, a few passages together today and, uh, and just share some stuff there that, that God's been really speaking to me about. And, and I know that over the last little while, these scriptures, I've been sharing uh, them often. But I want, again, to look at Psalm 24 because I, I really believe there's keys there that if we can just keep knocking at this door, if we can just allow God to open it up to us, that we'll, we'll understand some things more that will help us. It says here in Psalm 24, verse 7, it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, lift up your heads, O ye gates, lift, uh, lift up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, He is the King of glory. So what I'm trying to do and establish in my own thinking is that the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, He wants to come into me. He wants to come right into me. In 1 John Verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. So when we invite Jesus into our lives, God comes in. God, can you imagine the Creator of heaven and earth? Can you imagine Almighty God? God comes into me. God wants to come in and do battle. He wants to uh, do whatever is necessary. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. So the life and the light and, the, and God Himself wants to come into my life. If we could just realize and comprehend this, I think that we would change the way we think. It says in, in, in Revelation 3.20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, churches. In other words, we need to listen to what God is saying to us. We need to have an ear to hear because, you see, it's the truth that will break the strongholds, the lies that have been put inside us that keep us bound and keep us broken and keep us defeated. You see, when God comes in, this is who comes in. El, Shad El Shaddai comes in, God Almighty. God Almighty comes in. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. If you want whatever it is you need today, He's come into your life. And if we can acknowledge that and draw on that, well, then He will come in in a powerful way. You see, also Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider, the one who wants to provide for me, the one who wants to help me. He comes into my life. It's not just a, a little bit here or a little bit there. But there's a package deal that wants to come into my life. Whatever you need, God is there to help me. Amen. Do you believe that today? Jehovah Raphael comes in, the Lord who heals you. 
If you need healing today, He's come into your life. He's come in to heal you. He's not come in there just to bring doctrine or philosophy or tradition. He's come in there to heal you. He's come in there to be your provider. He's come in there to be your protection. He's come in there to help you. Uh, Jehovah uh, Ro Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. Alanoi, the most high God. The Lord God, He comes in. This is what happens when God comes into our life. He comes in with power. Words uh, reveal what we believe. You see, if you really want to know what somebody believes, just get around them for a little while and start to talk to them. You see, the King of glory comes in. If you get into a negative situation, and what, what I think is some, one of the worst things that can ever happen to people is that people that are depressed, they, or they call it, what do they call it now, mental, mental health. People with mental health and, and negative and feeling that thing, they put them into a ward full of people that are negative and depressed. And negative and depressed people all gather together, and guess what? You will never, ever, ever get delivered in that place. Because if that's, if you hang around negative people, if you hang around depressed people, if you hang around, you know, I was talking, I see he's back there today, today and he's talking about fishing, and, and he's got these lures, and he drives them behind his boat. He's not sitting there with pulling those lures behind the boat saying, that, no fish is going to take that lure. No, that guy's got more faith than most Christians have got because he just knows that those fish cannot stop themselves from eating that lure. And guess what? He catches fish. There's a lot of fishermen that never catch a fish. <laughs> How are we going? I wish I had a microphone. Uh, t Hello, testing, testing. But you see, it's the truth that we've got to understand. Words reveal what we believe. With our heart we believe. That's Romans 10.10. 10. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. That's Matthew 12.34. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 verse 7. If you think negative, if you, if you speak negative, guess what result you're going to get? You're going to get a negative result. I'll never make it. That kind of thinking comes from the flesh. What we've got to understand here today too, and, I, and I'm starting to get into my brain, that kind of thinking comes from the flesh and not the devil. It comes from our flesh. If we keep, keep blaming the devil for all of our problems, nothing will change. If the problem's not the problem, then the answer is not the answer. We've got to find the truth. I was thinking of Greg as I was writing this down. That caramel, custard-filled donut. The devil made me do it. No. <laughs> he had nothing to do with it. <laughs> no, no, no. That anger, that lust, flesh is at war with the Word of God. There's a war raging. That's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. If we don't fully understand that when the King of glory comes in, the Lord strong and mighty in battle, when He comes in, depression cannot stay there. Now listen to me. A lot of people that are saved still suffer with depression. It's because we don't understand who came into me. A lot of people out there are looking at the church and they're wondering why there's no power because the church has lost sight of the King of glory. We've lost sight of who came into us. And if we can understand that the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty in battle, He came into me. And when He came into me, He came in the, the Prince of Peace. When He came in there, he, he just didn't leave, just come, you know, a little bit of Him. He came in holus bolus. 
He came into my life. He came in and He flooded into my life. And when we realise it, when we understand it, when we really can comprehend it and understand and start drawing on that power, start drawing on that strength, start drawing on that anointing, I want to tell you that depression cannot coexist with the power of God that's on the inside of you. I want to tell you that that arthritis cannot coexist with the power of God that's on the inside of you. But if we don't understand and if we don't equate it with the power of God that's in me, well, then I want to tell you the church suffers and this church fails and the church goes into depression, goes into failure and defeat. Sometimes a person has such a revelation regarding healing or something like that. And they, 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 they go around and they pray for people and, and the altars are full and they lay, lay hands on the sick and people get healed. And they, they, they say, hey, I've got no pain left. I've got no pain left. Glory. Good. And it's all good. And they go out and, they, and two days later the pain comes back. Because, friend, we cannot be codependent on the man out the front. We've got to be codependent on the God that's on the inside of me. Otherwise, all we do is run around chasing after healing ministries or prophetic ministries or this sort of ministry or that sort of ministry. We've, you have the King of glory on the inside of you. Stir up the gift. Stir him up. Get hold of him. Come on. Believe God. Lay hands on yourself. Believe God. Destroy the works of the enemy. Anger, lust, whatever it might be. Can you see this? Can you see what I'm talking about this morning? We've got to, we've got to stand up and fight. God wants to do some restoration. Pr depression uh, can't stand there. Sickness can't stay there. They can't coexist. They cannot coexist with the, with the power of God that's inside you. Finney would preach night after night. Night after night, he would preach and people would be crying out for salvation. They would be crying out for release. They would be crying out, but he never, ever led them to Jesus. I want to tell you, friends, the cappuccino salvation will not get you to glory. True repentance will get us to glory. That's a new word we've got to use, an old word, but we've got to come to a place of repentance. We've got to come to a place where we acknowledge that we're sinners, but we've got to come to a place where we acknowledge that greater is he that's on the inside of me than he that's within the world. I've got to understand that the greater one dwells within me and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. I can, I can, I can, not because of Neil, but because of the one who lives inside me. When I opened up my heart and I invited him in, he came in. He just didn't come in in little splatters. He came in, hallelujah. The King of Glory came in. I love that. I like that. I enjoy that. I'd like to know that He's in there. A night after night after night, they would become crying for salvation. Finally, He'd pray for their salvation. There was a great move of the Spirit. Psalm 24 verse 7 again says to us, Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be you lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of Glory will come in. Just got to remember that in John 1, God came into our lives. The power of God, God Himself came into us. I am no weakling. I am not a failure. I am not defeated. I am a winner. I am an overcomer. Jesus came in to give us this, amen. Came to set us free. Jesus came in. The King of glory came in. When He came in, He just didn't uh, leave anything outside. <laughs> The king, strong and mighty in battle, he came in. I am more than a conqueror. I'm, I can boast in my God for that. Amen. When Jesus came in, the healer came in. When Jesus came in, I said, the healer came in. When Jesus came in, the healer came in. When Jesus came in, the healer came in. Amen. Sickness. When Jesus the healer came in, cannot coexist in the same body. Jehovah Jireh, whatever else. When Jesus came in, he came in, came in total, amen. Came in fully. See, we need the whole gospel today. 
We need to know that we've got to stir ourselves up. You've got to rise up today. I've got to rise up today. Take God's promise. You see, the, the world is looking at the church. I, I believe that we're going to see a move of God's Spirit where the church will be really become the church. Where we become the people of God. We take God's promises. Friend, I want to say this to you today. I want to dare you today. I want to dare you today to, to do something that perhaps you've never, ever done before. I, you know, sometimes we do things and, oh, I hope it works. Oh, I would heal, Lord. And, and we come to Lord like, like as if we, we, we put on the sad sack face. Oh, Lord, I'm so, you know, I'm miserable. You know, God, that I'm, I'm sick. I got this arthritis. And I got this and I got that. And we think somehow or other by doing that, that, that God's going to have pity on us. He's going to, perhaps then he'll heal me because he's sorry for me. <laughs> no, 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 no. My dog does that. <laughs> but we're children of God. What we've... We, we, <laughs> uh, perhaps if I just act it. Because <laughs> my mouth can't get what I'm trying to say out. But we, we, <laughs> that's why I got a big belly because I got a big God in there. No. We've got to understand who came in. And then when we, we, what we do is we, 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 we come into agreement with him. And you don't, you don't sort of come in with that sad sack look. No, you come in with, hey, that's who I am. That's who I am, hallelujah. That's who I am. And, and I'm going to rise up this morning. I'm going to get up off my blessed. I'm going to rise up this morning and I'm going to believe God, the King of glory who's on the inside of me, and I'm going to lay hands on my knee. I'm going to lay hands on my deaf ear. I'm going to lay hands on my blind eye. That's not, by the way. I'm, I'm going to lay hands... On, on that pain that's in my body, my frozen shoulder, my, my, uh, whatever, my back, whatever it might be that I have. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to do something. The other day, at, at, I was at, Nancy and I were at Bow Desert. We were doing some meetings. This gentleman came in on one of those walker things. He, he so miserable. He, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I looked at it, I've seen him before, I looked at him and I said, there you go. oh man, oh, and it, oh, he's a grumble guts. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and he, there he was, and, and, and anyhow, sorry. Anyhow, what was I talking about? <laughs> the grumpy old man, Nancy reckons me. But, uh, but anyhow, he, I, I was preaching away there. And I could see he was getting a bit excited. And he came out for prayer. And, and, I, and, and anyhow, the power of God hit him. And, and we started to just speak over him. And I got him to start saying some things and, and confessing some things. And then he got up off his, up, up, got off the floor and he started to stand there and he went, went to walk over to get his walker. I said, don't go near that walker. <laughs> don't go near that walker. And so he put the, <laughs> and, and he, I said, start walking, boy, start walking. And he started walking. And he, you know, the, we went to another town for lunch and he went, come to lunch for us. And there he was walking down the street down the thing there without his walker. He had his walker stick. He had it around his... He said, I only brought this and he wrapped it around my neck and dragged me. <laughs> there was a lady there that was suffering with depression and, and she came over and I said, how you... Oh, you're depression. <laughs> Look, please, I'm not... Don't... I'm, oh, I know I, I'm sounding rude, 
but I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm not making a bad job of it. <laughs> For somebody that's not trying, I know that. <laughs> I'm just trying to get out un so you understand what I'm talking about. Depression. Depression. Anyhow, I don't know what happened. I don't know how it happened, but anyhow. The power of God hit her and she went down under the power and she was on the floor there and I got beside her and I started saying some things over and breaking things and goodness knows what up. Got her to jump up off the floor there and I looked at her and I said, lady, I said, smile. She smiled. I said, laugh. <laughs> so she started to laugh. You see, depression and laughter cannot stay in the same house. What I'm saying is do something about it. You've got to laugh. At the Bible says lift up those hands that hang down. So if they're hanging down, lift them up. <laughs> Put on a smile on your dial. It's no good just, you know, there's a lot of things that, that we might agree with, but we don't agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that, but I don't agree with that. No, you've got to take the whole package. We've got to believe everything that God says and, we, and, and that will change our lives. And this lady there, I said, I, I looked at her eyeball to eyeball. I looked at her and I said, all I need is you, Lord. All I need is you, Lord. And as she was going out the door, she said, I'm going home to get that tape. She said, I'm going home to get that tape. I'm going home. I, she's got it somewhere. She said, I'm just going to play that tape. All I need is you, Lord. See, you've got to do something to break things. We just walk around like, hallelujah, well, God, if you want to do it, you can do it. No. Kick the devil in the butt. Break some things. Do some things. Push some things. Get hold of your knees if your knees aren't working. Somebody told me they got a sore knee. Was it somebody here? That should people everywhere. <laughs> Get all of those old wobbly knees and speak a bit of life into them, amen. Speak a bit of life in them. Come alive, you foul thing. <laughs> Come on, you is anybody here? Can you you know does anybody need to grab hold of something and you know you deaf here, man, we've got that many deaf people in this place. <laughs> Pardon? That, that man at the deaf shop, anybody go past the deaf shop? And he comes out there and he says, I said, sorry, can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Jesus. Work with Jesus. Drive out the infirmities. Let it rise up within you. Let, just start reading those three verses of Scripture that I gave you before. I can't remember what they were. Yes, I can. <laughs> Psalm 24, verse 7. What does it say? Lift up your head, O you gates, and be ye lifted up, your everlasting doors. The King of glory might come in. He might send a little bit of himself in. He might just give you a little bit. <laughs> who's, who's coming in? The King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty. He's going to come in. John 1.1, 1, 1, what does it say there? It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and blah, 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 and He came in. Hallelujah, Kenny came in. You've had all those operations already, praise God. you got, you got the new ones in there. Hey. I want the original, baby. Yeah, well, praise God. Too bad you didn't come before you had that done. You <laughs> oh blind eyes open in Jesus name, amen. Frozen shoulders be healed, amen. What have you got, Margaret? <laughs> <laughs> the King of Glory is in there. Come on. Come on. Why don't we just put, put your hand on somewhere where you need to get healed. Do something, amen. Come on, let's believe. Come on, let's shout it. Let's, let's, 
I don't know what we're going to do. I just feel like another ride on this chariot. <laughs> <laughs> Take the brakes off. <laughs> Dear Jesus. I'm trying to take the brakes off, but not off the wheelchair, off us. <laughs> Come on, put your hand on something. Let's believe God. Father, we just believe you, Father. We believe you for miracle power. Believe you for to touch people, Father. Lord, touch people, heal us, deliver us, set us free. Come on out, foul thing. Break the strongholds, release us. Amen. People need to, need to give their lives to Christ. Give your life to Jesus. You won't get a cappuccino. <laughs> you just get the King of glory. Hallelujah. He'll come in. He'll come in. He'll come into your life. He will touch you. He will deliver you. He'll set you free. He wants to come in. He wants to set you free. He's knocking on the door of your life. He wants to come in. Friend, He wants to heal you. Jehovah Jireh, all these different names of God. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. He wants to give you peace. He wants to break the stronghold of that depression, mental illness, whatever it might be that gets around people. Be healed in Jesus' name. Mighty Christ, come forth in us. Mighty God, rise up within us today. Rise up within us today. Heal us, deliver us. Set us free in Jesus' name. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor. The King of God comes in. The mighty God comes in. Comes in to fight for us. He's wanting to heal us. He's wanting to deliver us. Jesus, help us today. Pain's got to go. Pain's got to go. Shoulders have got to be healed. Stiff necks have got to be set free. Pain, headaches, 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 headaches. Got to go in Jesus' name. What's that bad headache? What do they call that? Migraine. You've got to go. Anybody here suffer with migraines? Come on, just give me a quick wave. Used to suffer with it. Remind, put your hand on the back of your neck, wherever it might be, right now. I speak to those migraines in the name of the Lord Jesus. I speak to it right now, and I release it from your life in Jesus' name. Folks, just let the power of God get around you. Amen and amen. Can I get the musos? Hallelujah. Arise, shine, for the light has come. At the desk at the back hall there today, if, if you want to go there and you're a visitor, you get a cappuccino. No. <laughs> get a cappuccino. <laughs> if you want to, get this, uh, I've got a list of the, all those scriptures uh, for the, the names of God if you want to get them. They're at the desk at the back there. If you're a visitor with us today, you'd like to visit that desk, they'll tell you all about us, who we are. But what right, right now, I, can I say this? I believe that there's got to come a spirit of breakthrough. And I, I just sense that there's a new, fresh wind that's beginning to blow over the church. And if you want to catch that wind, if you want to be part of what God is doing, if you, if, you, if you just sense, God, I want to break out of and break into the new that you've got for me. I want to break into this new thing. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to open this altar because I believe that God wants to do a work in us today as a church, as a people, to take us to another level, to take us into another dimension, to take us into a deeper experience a deeper revelation, a, a deeper encounter, a d something deeper. I, I, as I was preparing, this is what I felt God saying, I want to take people into something deeper. But friend, I'll, can I say this? We can sit back and we can just fold our arms and we can say, well, if he wants to, he can't. No, he can't. No, he can't. Jesus said to the boys, let's go to the other side. There was a great storm arose. There was a the wind and the sea. He spoke to them, totally annihilated it. The, 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 the wind ceased. The sea became calm. He went in, over the road a little bit further. There was a Gadarean with thousands of demons. He cast the demons out. He came back to another place. There was a woman with an issue of blood that had had it for 12 years, totally healed. 
He goes and raises up a, a, a girl that had died, 12-year-old girl that had died. He raised her up. Then he goes to his own town where there was the thing called unbelief and he could do nothing. See, he can't do anything where there's unbelief. And I don't know about you, but I made some statements earlier in my Christian life and I said a statement like this, I am not religious. Then I found out I was riddled with the stuff. Then I made statements like, I don't have any unbelief. Then I found out I'm riddled with it. Riddled with it. And this is what God's got to get out of us. Wrong thinking. Unbelief. So this morning, if you want, God's talking to you. I know we've had a bit of fun here this morning. But if God's talking to you, it's time now to get serious. I want to be part of this next move of God. I want whatever needs to be taken out. You may be here today, you say, I need to give my life to Christ. I need to surrender. I need to find Him. I want to be part of what God's doing. Whatever it is that you want to do right now. But if you say, I want to go deeper. I want a deeper experience. I want a deeper touch from God. I want a deeper encounter. I want something deeper. I want you just to come and stand out here this morning. So we all stand to our feet. You know, that song that, that Greg wrote, I see a nation on its knees. What do you see? That God stuff. That God reveals some stuff. I see a nation. I see a people. God of I see a people that are hungry for God. That's what brings him down. I see. See people wanting deeper, wanting more.